In this video, we're going to learn about the observer pattern and how we can use it inside of our games. Now, this is one of my favorite patterns just because it's extremely simple and will change the way that you organize a lot of your code. And we'll talk about why in a second. The observer pattern can most easily be described as having a subject and an observer. Now, your subject is going to be the event or the thing that holds the event. And when I say event, this could, this could be literally anything inside of your game. It could be the player takes damage. It could be the start of the level. It could be an enemy died. It could be the cutscene was triggered. If you can point to a single thing that happens in the level, that could be an event that you could use in this pattern. So you're going to have a class and you're going to have an event or a thing that happens. And then you're going to have things inside of your level that want to know when a thing happens. So these things inside of your level are going to watch this event. And whenever this event happens and this event gets invoked, all of the observers that are watching it will get notified and activate a method in reaction to that event. So for example, you could imagine if a cutscene started playing, or let's say a cutscene ends, right? You have your opening cutscene and you want to do some things. Let's say opening cutscene ended could be your event, and you may have the player input. You, you may want the player to be locked out of input, but as soon as the cutscene ended happens, your player input could be notified and say, okay, now I want to allow the player to move. Or, okay, I want to change the camera back to its position. Or, okay, I want to spawn the enemies in the level. The key point of the pattern is just you have a single thing that happens and the observers are notified when that thing happens and they can respond to it. To go just one level deeper, if you were to think about the code behind this, at least in terms of C-sharp, our subject will have an event, and this will be the thing that happens. And at some point, we need to determine when that event has actually happened, and we need, you know, that's just going to depend on the event. But as soon as we put in code when that thing happens, we tell the event to invoke and send out its notification. So we'll say thing happened dot invoke. Now, all of our observers are looking at this event right here. They're, at some point, they hook in to the thing happened event and they add their method that they want to respond with. So our, this observer might look at thing happened and say, okay, add my method to the list of things that will respond when thing happens. Conceptually, the observers are looking at the event, doing their hookup, to the method that they want to respond. And then at some point, whenever the event happens, this will happen. When the event happens, this will happen. When the event happens and this will happen. That's a little bit of what it would look like inside of code. So now as for our specific example, we're going to look at a damage system. And on our damage system, to give a little context to these uh, previously generic boxes, we may have a health system that has an event for when the player is damaged. So when this thing is damaged, we, are, we want to send out the notification, but we are also going to optionally provide an amount, the number by which this thing was damaged. And just to show you that you could do that. And so on the health script, we may have a method called take damage. And if anything wants to apply damage to the health, to this thing with health on it, they will have to say health dot take damage. They'll send in an amount. And then this health script tells the damaged event to send out the notification with the amount that was taken. It will also keep track of its own health or whatever. You can see that. And then all these different things inside the level may want to look and say, when this thing is damaged, I need to respond by doing something. So in the case of the target, it's going to update its health slider, its visual HUD. In the case of the hit text pop-up, we want to see the damage numbers pop up at the top. And in the case of our play sound script, we, whenever this thing takes damage, we want to play a sound effect. It's important to note that each of these level objects, they don't know anything about each other. This is a one-way dependency. The target does know about the health because it needs to go into this event. 
Um, but the target does not really know about the hit text pop-up, which is kind of nice. We can make these isolated classes that, you know, we have this dependency here, but we're not creating this weird spaghetti code of everything being connected. We are just each hooking into the health individually, which is kind of nice way to separate out your code. Now let's look at our observer pattern in action inside of Unity. So I have an example project here. I'm gonna hit play just so you can see what's already set up. And we have our canon and we have a target and we have a few other things going on that you'll see like a health bar and so forth. If we hit the space bar, we're going to fire a projectile and you'll see that when it collides with this target, a few things happen. We have some text pop up to display the amount of damage. We have our health bar gradually decrease. We hear a sound effect. And overall, the structure of our example is going to be one that we have our health script on the thing that's colliding with the projectile and is sending out the notification for other things that care whenever the projectile makes impact and causes damage. So let's see how this is set up. Again, I'm not gonna go through every single script inside of this example, but I do wanna touch on the parts that are relevant to the pattern. So first, we have our standard canon. Um, this isn't relevant to the pattern, but just to give you an idea, if we hit the space bar, we are just firing a projectile. The projectile is getting instantiated and then flying towards in the forward direction. And our projectile is a uh, it is a prefab here that has a projectile script on it and then some other things that make it work. And on our projectile script, we have a travel speed and damage and all these other things. But what's most important is our right here on collision enter. If we collide with something with health, we are going to apply damage. Now, the reason this is important is because our health script is the thing that has our event. So this is what is the catalyst for calling our uh, damage event. So in our scene, our target right here has health. And on our health script, we have an event that says when damage happens, this, this action event here, when we invoke this event, we are going to let anything else that is watching this event know and they can respond. So anytime this health script takes damage, we're calling damage.invoke right here and we're passing the amount. If we are out of health, we are you know, going to kill and then sending out a killed event. But we're gonna primarily worry about this one right here, damaged.invoke right here. So if other objects observe and subscribe to this damaged event, then whenever this thing gets invoked, they will know about it and they will respond however they need to. So for example, let's look at the target. Now the target has a script that just syncs in with the HUD. And inside of the target, which is controlling the health slider, on enable, so when, when this thing is active, when the script is active, on enable, we are subscribing to the damaged event and saying when this damaged event happens, we want to add the on take damage method to be called in response. So the process of adding this to the events, we'll call that when that notification happens. And on disable, we are removing this method right here from the damaged event notifications. And another way that you'll hear that described is subscribing to the event and unsubscribing, which is also the same as watching or no longer watching or whatever. So we will typically do that in on enable and on disable. So anyways, when this event notification happens, we will adjust the slider value because we are doing this in response. Save that. And you can see that happening in response to the damage. Our slider goes down. Now we have another thing that's happening inside of the level is our hit text that pops up at the top of the screen. That is just a text pop-up right here. And the way that we're getting that is our hit text pop-up script on our canvas object. 
we're doing the same thing. As long as we can get a reference to the health subject that we want to start watching, and that's specifically the health component inside of our scene that we want to watch that's sending out these notifications. So um, we will have to give it the reference to this right here, right? This is the thing with the health. We're just dragging that object instance right there. So we are watching that health component on that object. And inside of here, we're, we're going to subscribe this to this one a little bit differently just to show you that it doesn't have to be in on enable and on disable. Um, we're just making a method here just called start observing and we'll give it the health. And at any point in time we want to start observing, all we need to do is run this code right here, which is plus equals. So we're getting a reference to the event and, and the health, and this is the one that we're passing in. Um, if we get a reference to that event, we start watching it by adding a reference to the method we want to respond with. And then at some point when we want to stop observing, we just make sure to remove it. Now, if we add it and we don't remove it, we run the risk of some lingering dependencies because you know we never stopped watching it and there's a, a reference that it's creating there. Just be aware that it's good practice to stop observing whenever you no longer want this object to be active. So anyways, that's how that is responding. And also keep in mind that our hit text pop-up this cl this object doesn't really know anything about our target that we looked at previously. It knows about the health, and we're creating the dependency between the hit text pop-up and the health, but we are not creating a dependency between the hit text pop-up and the target, or you know when we go through the example to play sound. And this is really useful because we're not creating a lot of weird connections between all our different scripts. We're just creating a connection where it needs to be, which is between the observer and the subject. So that's important to realize here. And lastly, we're playing some sound effects and let's look at our script there. Inside of our level, we have this play sound on damage script, which, you know, as long as we can get a reference to the location of the place to play the sound, um, or if you're playing it 2D, that's fine too. But just to show you another example, you can break out the observer scripts as many times as you need to, because the only dependency is between this script, the observer, and the health. So inside of this play sound on damage script, we have the sounds that we wanna play, and then we need to give it a location to play at, since we're using 3D space. But this script is pretty simple. As long as we get a reference to the health script on enable, we start observing, so we add, our method to the list uh, of notifications when the health, uh, sorry, when the damaged event gets invoked, we we are going to add that on in on enable, and we're going to remove it and on disable. We're going to do the same thing with killed, and also remove killed on disable. And when this event happens, this will will get a callback. It's called a callback, and we'll get a callback to this method and it will run in response. So in this case, we're getting the amount of damage and we're not really doing anything with the amount of damage here. It's nice that we get it, but we could theoretically, we could play different sound effects if the damage is above or below a certain threshold, for example, like a critical hit or something. Um, you could do that if you want, but in this case, we're just saying when we get the notification, if we have filled in our references, then play the sound. Same thing with on killed. So again, those are three different places that are accessing the health event, the damaged event, but none of those three things, the observers, so our text pop-up HUD or our sound effects, our target, they don't know about each other. They only know about the health script. So it's just a really, really handy way of creating that one-way dependency. And it's also nice because you're not checking for if a Boolean has changed an update, you're just waiting and getting the notification for the exact moment a thing has changed. So just one last final show. The projectile triggers the damaged event. The damaged event sends out the notifications, and then everything that is subscribed to the damaged event or the killed event or whatever gets notified and responds by running a method. So our HUD is now independent and not dependent upon any of the other things in the level. 
Our HUD is independent, is independent of everything except for the health. Uh, our sound effect doesn't know about the HUD. Our sound effect just responds to the health damaged event. And our hit, our hit text pop-up doesn't even know about the HUD down here, just knows about the health event that it's watching. Super, super handy way of breaking out your observers and your different classes into uh, fewer dependencies and just watching the thing that it needs to watch and keeping things very simple and compact and only responding when it needs to. So very, very handy pattern. Um, you'll see the observer pattern used a lot inside of UI in particular. Anytime you have a HUD element that's responding to game events, very useful pattern. Um, but you'll see this pattern all over the place. Anytime you have an event happen inside of your level that other things may need to react to, you probably want to look towards the observer pattern.